It's Brian Lehrer Live. For decades, futurists have been predicting that education would be revolutionized by computers and the internet. First, we heard lots about putting libraries online, then computers in the classroom, then universities like MIT offering free courseware. But nobody figured on a young man named Salman Khan. His site teaches math, science, history, and more to hundreds of thousands worldwide. And it's all free. The Khan Academy is most known for what's now about a thousand videos on YouTube. It starts literally at one plus one equals two, and it goes all the way up to the college level calculus and physics. Everything is in these very uh, short, encapsulated videos, one concept at a time. My cousin Nadia was visiting me from New Orleans when I was in Boston, and she was having trouble with math. She was in sixth grade at the time. I agreed to do this remote tutoring with her, so I started putting up videos on YouTube. And before I knew it, random people all over the world started watching them and sending me letters and testimonials, and I started getting excited about it, and I just kept going. I think I've learned more about math in the past three weeks than I had in all four years of my high school study. When you watch them, you just comprehend everything. You just get it. I ended up passing a whole bunch of tests from his videos. One thing that kind of shocked me, I get a lot of letters from the Middle East. I get a lot of letters from Latin America. Ethiopia, Uganda. It's really uh, reached far more uh, students than I could have ever imagined. Right now there are about a thousand videos. I started recording about three years ago. Uh, now I'm doing it full time. I'm hoping to be able to put out a couple hundred videos a year. I, I see a world where literally anyone with access to a computer and the internet will be able to go to the Khan Academy and get a world-class education. Impressive, right? So let's get to know the man behind this virtual global classroom. Joining us live via Skype from Mountain View, California, Khan Academy founder, Salman Khan. Hey, Salman, hello from New York. Thanks for doing this with us. Hi, Brian. Great to be here. Uh, I gather you believe you're a better teacher on video than in person. Is that correct? That, that, that's what my cousins first told me when I put up the, uh, the very first YouTube video. Uh, I, I viewed it as a bit of a backhanded compliment, but I think they're, what, what they were saying, I was doing these, these uh, remote tutoring sessions, these virtual sessions with them, and I think what they liked about the YouTube version of me as opposed to the live version of me is that they didn't have the stress of feeling like their cousin in Boston was judging them or, 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 you know, or, or that they had to answer questions immediately or, or, or fear of feeling feeling or looking stupid uh, to, to the instructor, and, and that they could watch and pause and repeat whenever they wanted to. 1,500 uh, videos, 14 million views. What's the genesis of this, Salman? Um, you know, just like I just said, it, was, it, was, it started with me tutoring my cousins remotely. They were in New Orleans. I was in Boston. And uh, it worked out really well for them when I had one or two or three that I was tutoring, but they started doing well, so I wanted to tutor more and more. Uh, I had a day job. I was an analyst at a hedge fund at the time. And um, the logistics got difficult, and I thought, well, it would at least would be nice. Maybe I could scale myself up a little bit if I made some YouTube videos. And um, as, as you just mentioned, their, their initial feedback, I thought it would be a nice to have supplement, something that they could use to review concepts. It wouldn't be as good as our live interactions, but... Uh, uh, the first feedback I heard from them was that it was actually better. Let's, let's see an example of um, you teaching. This in particular is you teaching, of all things, differential equations. And what's interesting here, and how this is a, a departure from what we've learned before about just regular equations. Is, let, let, let me write down a regular equation just to remind you what they look like. So a regular equation, if we had one variable, it would look something like this. I don't know x squared plus, I don't know, the cosine of x is equal to the square root of x. I just made that up. Here, the solution is a number, or sometimes it's a set of numbers. Sometimes there's more than one, right? If you have a polynomial, you could have more than one values of x that satisfy this equation. Here, for a differential equation, the solution is a function. Our goal is to figure out what function of x, and, and here I wrote f of x explicitly, but what function of x explicitly satisfies this relationship or this equation? So let me show you what I mean by that. And I've, I've, I have my differential equations book from college, so I'm going to use that as, as, as we go. So oh, that high school math feeling, there it is. <laughs> but well, how, well beyond high school math. <laughs> I, I guess. How do you, how do you approach, I mean, you were, okay, you came out of hedge funds, whatever. Were you an expert in differential equations? 
I, you know, an expert is kind of a loaded word, especially when you think about things in kind of academic topics. Um, I, I'm not a cutting edge researcher at the at the you know the leading edge of differential equations. I have not contributed to the field of differential equations, but I am someone who who loved math. I was into math in you know high school, college. I was a math major, but I teach things outside of my credentialed uh, areas as well. Uh, but but the way I see it, as long as someone has. I, I think what I bring to the table is, is is being able to connect the intuition behind a lot of concepts and be able to communicate. You know, I, I say in a way that I, I wish it was delivered to me the first time. So that's really what I'm trying to do. And you do all of these yourself. All 1,500 videos in every subject is you. It, it, it's all me. I, I joke. I'm the I'm the faculty of the Khan Academy. Um, are there subjects that are harder for you to do well? Um. You know, it's. I like challenging myself uh, because uh, when I started doing this, a lot of people said, okay, you've done some algebra, can you do calculus? And once you do calculus, can you do uh, a chemistry? And once you do chemistry, can you do the humanities? So I, I always like pushing the boundaries. Um, and and I, I just naturally like learning different topics. I, I would say, I wouldn't say harder is the word, but I think it requires more prep on my part to do something like the French Revolution than it does to do, say, the differential equations videos. Do you have a business model? You give these away for free, right? Yeah, the, the, um, the decision was made actually before I even quit my job to make this a not-for-profit not entity, make sure that, that it stays focused on, on its goal, which is to give education away for free. Um, the way I'm paying my bills, well, I was living off of savings when I, I quit my job in September of 2009. And until recently, I was essentially just living off of savings. Uh, but very recently, uh, we've gotten enough donations to uh, support a small salary for me and, and give us a bit of a runway, and, and hopefully we'll get more. Is the paid university concept an old-fashioned concept as far as you're concerned, or is this just an alternative for a very select group of people? Well, it's definitely an alternative. I don't think it's for an alternative for a select group of people. I think it's, it's uh, you know, when you look at the user base, there's any what people who are gifted students who want to race ahead. There's a lot of college students at, at all different skill levels. There are homeschoolers using it. There are retirees using it. Um, so so I, I would say it's a selective. It's a fairly broad audience. Uh, and it's at minimum that. It's at minimum kind of a nice to have. Uh, in terms of the college experience, I think there's things the college is doing right. I think it's nice to go to a campus that's well manicured and have a nice experience there. But I, I think this does challenge some of the notions of why do we have these 300 person lectures at, at some university? Actually, all universities, you have these 300 person lectures when you can get on demand instruction at your own pace or when you want it. Uh, you're not, you don't have to take notes, it's always there for you. Who are your users primarily? I realize it's a diverse group, but do you find certain kinds of people, certain groups of people um, are really, you know, hitting on your stuff for certain uses in their lives? Yeah, I mean, the, the core users are who you would expect. It's, um, I would say, high school and college students, uh, mainly in the U.S., mainly in North America. I'd say about 80% North America, 20% the rest of the world. But uh, there's for other what? Core... For what? As, as kind of an online, you know, spark notes or some other reason? Yeah, I, I think there are students who are stuck in a math class. Uh, either they missed some days, they zoned out through a couple of lectures, or they don't connect with the professor they have. And uh, they use this either as a, as a supplement or to catch up or, or really as really their, their primary source of, of understanding the concepts. Uh, I get a lot of letters from people who, you know, they don't use the textbook anymore to learn the concepts. They don't, they, a few people who don't show up at lecture anymore. But go ahead, that's one core group. Yeah, and the others, you know, the homeschoolers love it. I didn't think about it at first, but it's kind of an obvious group that would uh, appreciate this type of thing, both for the, the students directly and for the, the teachers, uh, for the parents. Um, I've actually gotten some, some groups are using it for teacher training, which, which is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a compliment. Um, uh, and, and it is actually being used in the classroom. I get letters from teachers who are, uh, uh, one, assigning the lectures for, for homework, uh, instead of reading, and some teachers are showing it in the classroom and then, and then using that as a, as a starting point for discussion. And you're obviously very organized uh, about how you do this. We're going to show another video, a little bit of you talking about how some of the math and science videos are organized. Sure. And then when you think about the sciences, we have physics. And the physics playlist is mainly, I call them, applied algebra problems. So you might want to watch physics right around after you finish algebra. 
there's a there's only a few videos that require calculus. I'll eventually make an entire playlist on calculus-based physics. Most of this is just algebra-based physics. So you're ready to go if you have a good, solid understanding of algebra. And then the other science is the chemistry. Uh, it'd be nice to have chem have algebra out of the way. Pre-algebra is probably enough for most of it. Pre-algebra is probably enough for most of it. But algebra, if you have your algebra out of the way, then you're going to have no trouble at all with the chemistry playlist. Chemistry. And then biology does deal with a little bit of, of probability and things like that. So it wouldn't hurt, but that's actually that doesn't even require too much mathematics, or at least the mathematics that I've diagrammed here. We could put biology here. I guess the big takeaway is that algebra is really important for pretty much anything you want to do. There are some genetics problems that require some basic level and, and some population genetics uh, population uh, genetics problems that have some biology in it. And then all the finance and economics, that also, I think it assumes a base level of algebraic understanding. So the things on banking, the things on banking. You don't have to have a super advanced. If you just so that's, as I said, very organized. I guess that's the same kind of thing that any university would do as they're figuring out what's a prerequisite for what, right? Right, no, that, that's the general idea. And, and actually, this video was made a, by, a byproduct of, there's so much content on the site now that I got a lot of requests for people, from people who just were kind of lost. What, what do I view after what? And, and um, you, know, you know, the one area where I think this diverges from the university model, the, the university model is very, I mean, that diagram was kind of class-based. But I think what's here is a lot more granular. So you can kind of go straight to the prerequisite, the concept-based prerequisites, as opposed to an entire class. Are you interested in trying to get accredited, or is that not a goal? It's a long-term goal maybe to have some type of direct accreditation. I mean, I can imagine a world we, we actually have a, a software piece where we give people exercises and things like that. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, 10 years in the future, it might be a lot more informative to an employer or university as opposed to saying you have a 3.9 GPA to actually give someone the data of all of the work that you've done. Uh, but in the short term, maybe the next year or two, I do see a reality where we can tell people, look, if you've understood all of these concepts, you are now ready to go take the GED and you're likely to pass it. Or if you take the SAT, because of the exercises you've done, we have you know, this level of confidence that you will get a, an X on the SAT. So, so we, we can view the Khan Academy as kind of your coach, and then you get your external credential from some other source. I didn't see you in any of the videos that we screened. Do your students ever see you at a smart board or with an overhead projector or anything like that in these videos? No, and, and, and you know, the, the form factor started off uh, out of me just, just not having a video camera. So, uh, uh, but, but then uh, uh, it, I got a lot of feedback that this form factor actually works for a lot of people, even though, you know, now I probably could get a video camera and, and go to whiteboard, but people say that it feels a lot more intimate. It's not a, the, the, the instructor's face isn't a distraction. Uh, it's kind of like they, they, they feel like I'm the voice, you know, I'm either sitting next to them and tutoring them or they feel like I'm, I'm actually inside of their brain talking to them. So it's, uh, so I, I think I'll just stick with that. It's actually funny because I've gotten letters from people who imagine me in completely uh, different ways than I might be and they kind of project their own impressions onto me, which is, which is kind of a neat uh, artifact of, of this form factor. You said that one of your goals is to teach the way you always wanted to be taught. Can you put that into words? Yeah, you know, I think it's... Um, and I'm finding this out more and more the more concepts I do, that there's a lot of intuitive uh, connections between a lot of subjects that I think the thousand page textbooks and then, you know, to some degree the bureaucracies at the standards making organizations, they kind of chop them up to a level that you, you lose all of the, all of the intu intuition, you lose all of the cross subject interactions. And uh, for me, what made math fun, what made science fun, is to really explore things and see how different concepts were, were connected and what, what a formula is actually saying about the universe. And so I think people who watch the Khan Academy, they really find like, I'm not just throwing formulas at you. I, I give you an intuition for what the formula is saying. And I also tell you what it's saying about the universe generally, what are its implications. Um, and, and also, how did we get that formula? You know, I don't, I don't just say memorize it and apply it. And I, and I think when, when, you, when you start learning that way, one, it's a lot more fun because we all actually do want to learn about the universe. And um, it actually builds a really, really strong foundation when, when, you, when you learn more advanced topics. Which are your most popular videos? Introduction to trigonometry is, really? is probably the, that or introduction to calculus. Why? Are, th those are probably the, t the two most popular, popular videos. Why? I, well, you know, trigono well, I think both people take those courses. Both people <laughs> are at the same time kind of intimidated by those courses. Um, and I think when you watch those first two videos, uh, you know, the introduction to calculus is an interesting one because I've had letters from people who've taken calculus, 
and, and who got A's in calculus. And then they watch that video and they say, oh, I finally understand what calculus is about. Like, wh what's it even good for? Um, so, so there's that, and I think introduction to trigonometry is just a, a huge pain point for a lot of students, and so a lot of them kind of end up on YouTube looking for help. So what's the future for you? Is it collaboration with others like you, if there are any others like you, to continue to grow or something else? You know, I, I'm, I'm very open to it, and when I started off, you know, when I only had 100 videos, I thought that was the, the, the road I would take, <laughs> that I would find a, a team of other people like me, and we would just collectively do it. Um, open to it, but I've, I've kind of committed myself that I enjoy doing it, so I've, I've done 1,500 videos, you know, for over four years, and m most of those four years I was working a day job. Uh, I've done about 600 since I've quit my job in September, uh, so I'm fairly confident that I could, I could, do, I could tackle a, a big chunk of it, but I'm sure other people will kind of join in. Um, but then augment it with software and then, and then a kind of a community built around the 200,000 people using the site right now uh, to, to really turn it into a, a virtual school. Hey, Salman, great stuff. Thanks for coming on. Great. Thank you. Thank you.